right, so let's get into uh, some of our topics uh, for today because I know we're still gonna get some more stories from Steve. Let's start off with uh, the rumors of Kojima having a deal with Xbox. Yeah, uh, this one has a little bit of a setup just for, for con context, so stick with me here and we'll, we'll get through it. But last week, a post went up on the PlayStation blog announcing that a new horror game titled Abandoned was in development from the studio called Blue Box Games. Uh, this it was, it had a short trailer depicting like realistic environments in the woods, creepy atmosphere, first person perspective. That's about it. Uh, I mean, normally a game announcement like this wouldn't really drive that much engagement, uh, but that wasn't the case with this game, um, only because the studio Blue Box uh, Games isn't really well known. Um, in fact, the, the studio had only released an early access game on Steam and hasn't really been touched in quite some time. Studio's online presence in terms of like a website, social media is non-existent. And at the end of all of this, like people just started speculating whether or not this could be some sort of front for a Kojima game. And I know that before we even like get into it, like, yeah, that's kind of a stretch, but at the same time, Kojima has done stuff like that in the past. I like they he announced the Phantom Pain by Moby Dick Studios. PT is another great one, which uh which was released under a pseudonym of uh, uh 7780 Studio, which then turned out to be like the demo for Silent Hills. But at the end of it all in peace. Oh, I know. That was such a great time. Uh I love that that moment. I will never games. wipe my hard drive because of right? that demo. Oh, <laughs> I I know. Know. I'm bad about when I got rid of my PS4 because I was like, oh but that <laughs> I'm never going to get that again. I know, I know, right? Um, but yeah, so it's not the case. I mean, uh, Blue Box uh, Games developers, they came out and they denied the entire thing. They said that we have no association with Hideo Kojima and they're just working on, on this game that they're passionate about. But the thing is that in all of this, uh, there was an interesting report that came out of uh, VentureBeat, Jeff Grubb, who a lot of people will know. He's, you know, pretty up to date and uh, he has a lot of sources, but he reported that on the original story as it was unraveling. Uh, saying that, you know, Kojima's not working on Abandoned. In fact, he's working on another game that could be published by Microsoft. I'll just read the, the full excerpt here just for context, but he said, quote, uh, but the biggest piece of evidence I have that Abandoned is not a Kojima joint is that Kojima is in talks with Microsoft about publishing his next game, according to source a source familiar with the matter. And yes, that statue on Phil Spencer's shelf was referencing a potential deal with the legendary developer. I cannot confirm if Xbox closed the deal yet, but my understanding is that Kojima is the focus of a Microsoft plan to tap into Japanese talent, end quote. Uh, and yeah, so people could probably remember there was that screenshot that was going viral of Phil Spencer's shelves, which had like the uh, the Kojima Productions Luden statue there. And everyone's like, oh, is Death Stranding coming to Xbox? But it kind of seems that no, there might be a new project in development that Microsoft might be uh, lending their publishing talents to. And then it wasn't long after that, Jeff Grubb chimed into Kind of Funny Games Daily and said that it's his understanding that the deal is currently between lawyers right now. So yeah, it's long winded, but at the at the, I just kind of wanted to know what do you guys think of a potential deal between Xbox and Kojima, who's, you know, for the longest time has been really associated with PlayStation, especially with Death Stranding. I'm just happy. Sorry, Malik. I'm just happy we're talking about Kojima. So, Steve, Damn. Steve, there's a running joke on the squad cast. Um, I love okay. Kojima. I loved Death Stranding. Aaron Caboose, who's usually our fourth chair here, um, he doesn't agree with me and usually hates on me for that um, in every episode. He tries to like fit it in there that uh, Death Stranding was great. So I'm just happy that we're talking about Death Stranding and it just so happens that Aaron isn't here today to actually right? slam it. Yeah. So I'm happy. That made me laugh. Thinking, I was thinking about upholding his legacy, but I think I'll let you have this week. You know, just let your fangirl fly. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Uh, but I think this is great news if it's true. Uh, yeah. but like there's so much ifs, uh, but if this is it's true, like it kind of makes sense. You know, Phil Spencer has been talking about how he's going to have something for the Asian market, right? Mm -hmm. He he mm -hmm. specifically said that he was focusing on serving that community um, there and really the types of games that they want to see and who else to do that but Kojima, yes. right? Yeah. It's just that we were so blindsided if this is true because of Death Stranding and the deal that Kojima had with PlayStation that mm -hmm. we really thought Kojima, you know, once you land with a deal with PlayStation, you don't leave kind of thing. Um, but Kojima's like this 
wildfire you know he does whatever he wants and mm-hmm. i think this would be a huge shift also on playstation's end and i know we're not necessarily talking about that yet because we have that coming up um in our next topic but i think a shift for them to see the value of their exclusives with other developers um yeah so i i would like the shake up it'd be welcomed anything kojima is welcomed absolutely Um, i think this coming off of the back too of and and to to i guess gamers this may not seem like a big deal but for anyone who looks at the gaming industry as a whole it was a big deal for playstation to lose the show coming off the back of that and then also quite possibly losing kojima and then you know you got the recent bethesda acquisitions it's starting to look a little bit grim for playstation i i have faith that playstation has their own stable of titles that they are prepared to launch and that they have you know ready but it's looking like more and more xbox is preparing for a five-year future something that we we haven't seen them really do they've kind of at least from my perspective and i'm a playboy i'm a playstation fanboy um so you know take it with a grain of salt but it feels like xbox has always been moment to moment and kind of grasping um for something that would solidify them in the gaming industry beyond you know halo uh and gears of war and some of their staple titles and now is the perfect moment for xbox to do that because xbox is really this place that houses a lot of games and some of them incredibly popular AAA titles and some of them not and with them being able to add value to their brand and incorporate some of these cinematic uh, AAA titles or even AA titles that we're starting to see uh, I think it's really important for them going forward yeah I think uh, I agree I agree with all y'all it's essentially because Kojima uh, since the PlayStation deal um, and we always just kind of like assumed that that was going to be like Kojima was going to be an exclusive PlayStation studio um but now i guess we're kind of like we're starting to kind of see like not like kojima didn't really want like he doesn't want to be tied down uh mm-hmm. to it to a uh, to a studio i think that's like he's been burned in the past uh by that so i think being exclusive just kind of like uh would hinder him um in his in his in his vision uh and i think that him moving to, to xbox i think would make business sense if he if they were able to give him a deal that would allow him to be able to do what he wants and create whatever whatever he wants without sort of the the all the extra stuff that have launching a studio and having that like having that studio stay afloat is something that every sort of creative director has to sort of deal with on top of trying to be able to create a game so having a, an exclusive thing with xbox could like alleviate that some of that stress and sort of be like okay let's focus in on on the game and and camille i think you said it right it's definitely a way for for Xbox to really dive into that uh, to that Asian market that they've mm-hmm. been wanting to, and who better to basically say to like basically tell Asian gamers that hey we've got Kojima like the one of the biggest names that you can be able to have other than say Miyamoto, um, sure. uh, like basically like we and, and I think it's I mean if this deal kind of comes through we obviously don't know a lot of about it right now because it's it's being with the lawyers and we still it's still a rumor, I think this could be an opportunity for Xbox to basically be like hey you know what Kojima why don't you run the Xbox Asian studios and just mm. and just kind of like have a like have the belt like have like a bevy of, of studios that first party studios that are just for Xbox and like and you get to kind of sort of creatively dictate kind of like okay who who wants to be able to work with like uh, for Xbox and and Kojima would be kind of like that good sort of leader to 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 be a part of that I don't know that's that, that's something that I've I've heard being discussed um yeah. in in a few conversations I've had about with people about this but I think that would be a really cool idea I mean who knows it could be just this game moving forward like whatever they're working on but i think like that could this could open up the door for a lot of opportunities and microsoft microsoft is hungry right now yeah um absolutely. with all the news and all the deals that they've been they've been doing lately like they want to be able to make sure that the mistake that they made with, with the, the xbox one launch that that doesn't happen again mm-hmm. um and it does sort of make it seem like that sony's sort of asleep at the wheel um i think i don't think that's the 100 percent the case because i think that sony's just kind of still in that they, they're secret they're everything's a secret until they're ready to announce it yeah. and uh, whereas xbox is like you know what let's just talk about it now let's be transparent let's 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 do these fun little like uh like teasers being like well what's what's on the, in the back of phil spencer's background like uh like right. that kind of stuff like that's just like they're 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 gaining mind share even though playstation's still the king of the, uh, the king of the consoles right now still but i think it's like they're gaining xbox is gaining mind share being like and kind of make it look like 
that Sony's behind, like asleep at the wheel. And I'm like, ah, I, I wouldn't count out Sony just yet. Like they have, they, they haven't had the bevy of announcements, but um, they're still like, they're, they're still a contender um, in, in this race. Absolutely. And um, I know Camille, you love tinfoil hat moments. And I'm going to give you one right now. <gasps> okay. I'm gonna give you... when, I, when I started reading this, I was like, wow. Like why why would this happen in the first place? And it started like going through my mind. I was like, what if Hideo Kojima came up with such a concept that even Sony was like, nah, we don't want this. And then Microsoft was like, yo, come over here. We'll do it. Let's do it. Like, what if it was that crazy? Like Death Stranding, really great game. I love that game. It was it was my game of the year in uh, 2019, but it was off the wall. I mean, even the marketing around it was just Wild. No one knew In- what it was. No exactly. one knew what it was. I wonder if he, he he's kind of like complacent in that in that he's like, let's do more. Let's double down on this like mis- mystery or even if he's trying to do like a horror game again. Like, what if it's just so wild that Sony was like, we can't do this. Like, it's got to be it's got to be mainstream. You know, like we're going to kind of talk about that concept uh, in a little bit. But yeah, that, that just kind of makes me wonder if if it was just so weird. That Sony didn't Ooh. want it, and then Microsoft was like, "Come over here, let's do it." Let's. I want. I let's wonder get weird. If to kind of like to kind of jump on that. Yeah. I wonder if maybe Xbox is like, "Hey, we got the license to be able to make a Metal Gear games again. Want to come make a Metal Gear game with us?" Ooh. Ooh, I don't know if Kojima would do that because Metal Gear Survive like really sucked. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, they would be under Microsoft's banner, not necessarily Konami. So I think it's like, that's hey, true. That's make true. It completely unrestricted. It's like Metal Gear's yours. Yeah. Like, just, here's the franchise. Here's the keys to the franchise again. You know what? Like, although I, I want to see, I want to see like Big Boss. I want to see Snake. Like, I want to experience that again. But at the same time, I want Kojima to be done with everything that mm. he did with Konami, except PT. Um, which, sure. you know, because just PT was never complete, right? Like we never actually saw it and it, it had so much potential with everything mm-hmm. that people were still discovering up to like last year or two years ago, right? From that demo, right? So yeah. I feel like, you know, the fans are kind of owed that game to at least be complete um, or a longer demo, something, Kojima, something. Um, but I actually want to go on that. Is this just a result, like this possible deal, a result of how, you know, the gaming industry is moving? Like we've moved now where being cross-platform for a lot of multiplayer games, like that is something now that's pretty much essential, right? Mm-hmm. Um, those those boundaries of exclusivity are kind of diminishing as, you know, now you're probably, like Death Stranding was exclusive for a year on PlayStation, but then came out on PC the year after, right? So are we now seeing where developers on their side are like, well, no, why do we have to be dedicated? Like maybe we're dedicated for Death Stranding titles to PlayStation, but other games, we could also go to other publishers as well. I think I think to bounce off of, and that's a, that's a really good question. It's like to bounce off of Steve's point to kind of answer that is that Xbox already has a, a lineup of really big titles that they know are going to make them money. PlayStation, yeah. not so much. It makes sense. But here's the thing, right? PlayStation, yeah, like Spider the Spider-Man era, we're kind of waiting for the next. Oh, like we're waiting. Okay. Yeah, oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Waiting. We don't have anything. Like God of War, in my mind, is the next huge PlayStation seller versus Xbox. We've got whatever Bethesda's working on. We've got Halo Infinite still to come. They could release a Kojima game and not suffer if it doesn't make money because they've got another blockbuster hit around Mm -hmm. the corner so i think it's more so not much of like i don't want to say like playstation turning away from something that's out of the ordinary or like too out there but more so of we need something that's going to be successful for Mm -hmm. the time that we that's kind of a guarantee Yeah. yeah no that makes sense i think the one thing that will essentially like Solid, like uh, solidify um, at least in, in in fans' eyes or maybe even Kojima's eyes is that because one of the things is like I I mean I don't know 100 percent but um, are the, the are the old Metal like Metal Gear games like are they available to be able to play like or buy on PlayStation or is it just Metal Gear Five? Mm. Um, there's a col- there's an HD collection. collection yeah. There's an HD collection. Okay, because I was thinking I'm like what like 
because th that would be an absolute seller for for game pass uh, uh, that would be sure. actually oh if God. they were able to get all the metal gears and then it's like and then and like and then if they announce being like okay and metal gear 6 or whatever mm -hmm. yeah. is going to be exclusive to game pass date like day one that kind of thing like that could be like that would drive a lot of fans to uh to game pass and to and to xbox and to their uh ecosystem and that'd be really cool i mean granted that technically any game that like if Kojima is going to be working with Xbox being like, we know that like, hopefully that at least will be day one on game pass. I think that will bring, bring a lot of fans to it, but like having that sort of like one, two punch being like metal gear Kojima we're in, it's like, like if that's when it's dark and it's going to start to see where like Xbox is taking a huge chunks out of, out of PlayStation or a uh, PlayStation right now. And uh, like Bethesda was kind of like, that was a hail Mary of a, of, 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 of a deal. Um, and I still believe that like essentially like stuff like Starfield essentially is going to be Xbox exclusive yeah. um, in the future. But I think in a way like having Kojima on board as well, that's just I mean, I, I keep thinking like PlayStation, what are you doing? Like yeah. you're losing things left and right. Like who's like what's going on? Mm -hmm. um, well, it's not even just the that. game itself. It's it's the name. It's the face like Kojima exactly. is a name, something that doesn't really happen in video games. It's yeah. like. He's a celebrity. Like you said, Miyamoto, but I mean, that's that's never going to happen. You're not going to yeah. see that cross platform. But like having a Kojima branded game on your platform, that means something yeah. to the there's, players and to the industry. There's like 10 names in gaming that if you have tied to a, a game, people are talking about. You know, you have either Miyamoto, Kojima, you have Troy Baker, right? Like you have sure. those names yeah. that immediately get that headspace that Steve was talking about in possible consumers, right? And what Xbox is doing here is just super smart because even if like these rumors aren't true, they're not turning down these rumors because they want people to be talking about the potential yeah. sure. that Xbox has. Would a Kojima game exclusive to Xbox be enough for PlayStation fanboys and girls to buy an Xbox? Probably not, but it's definitely building up that um, notoriety that Xbox wants, right? They said that they were focused on more than just gaming, the games, right? How people are accessing the games and other services. And I honestly think like Headspace, just being in your mind and people talking about Xbox is one of their main focuses for the year. Yeah, because yeah. they're good at it. They're yeah. good at just engagement and communicating with uh, the industry. Yeah, and I think it's like, yeah, it'd be great if if people would buy the Xbox console because that's that's part of it. But I think I think you might get like you, you. I don't think you'll get PlayStation fans being like, okay, now I'm gonna buy an Xbox. I, but I think it'd be an easier selling point to basically be like, well, you know, we got Game Pass on PC and mobile, yeah, so yeah. you like, I think that will make me make people sign up for Game Pass, which is all Xbox wants. Like to them, console is great, but they're like they want to own the platform. They want to own that ecosystem. And Game Pass is like the is the ultimate value in gaming right now. Um, mm -hmm. Being able to jump in uh, with a hundred plus games, and and for like as little as like wow, well, like a dollar if you get it for a promotion, but like you can get mm -hmm. it for like fifteen bucks a month or sixteen in in Canada. Like it just it is just kind of like a no brainer. So I could definitely see like PlayStation fans still having their PS4s, PS4 Pros, or PS5s, but then being like, all right, well I got a PC, I'm gonna try out Game Pass see what it's like and and if they're going to be like well i'm going to play the, i'm i'm going to be so such a, a playstation fanboy i'm only going to play kojima on, on game pass on pc and then i'm out yeah. um like even but even then it's like well you still play game pass on pc and so you probably didn't cancel the <laughs> subscription so you're still yeah. paying for it too you know like, exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> or that, even if there are like console specific people like thinking about coming over i mean they, they still have the, the series s like the lowest yes yeah, lowest barrier my, of entry that's my big thing too to that point is that I have Xbox Game Pass on PC, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of games that are only available on the console version yep. of Xbox Game Pass. So I've considered because I can't get my hands on a PlayStation 5, it would make sense for me to get a cheap Xbox S and make it the Game Pass machine, you know? Yeah. But then also too, uh, you mentioned bringing the Metal Gear Solid collection to Game Pass you can't play or you can't download any of the metal gear solid games off of the playstation 3 store or the playstation vita store anymore that's so right you can only get them through playstation now yeah which <laughs> i saw you hold back the anger yeah, let's, when let's, you let's, said that 
PlayStation <laughs> yeah, now yeah, yeah. is bad. But like that's a that's a great point is even doing something like bringing the Metal Gear Solid collection over to Game Pass and then you make it available on console and PC and then you start really pushing the marketing for that Series S where it's literally just a streaming box for an incredibly low price in my opinion. If it's all of these little things that Microsoft is doing to start getting that that mind space and that headspace of PlayStation fans of like, well, at what point do I want ease of use, and at what point do I care about brand loyalty? You know, yeah. Right? Yeah. starting to get to that point. And personally, for me as a PlayStation fan, if I bought a PlayStation Five and I only played three games on it, I would be satisfied because mm. that's what PlayStation kind of has come to in my mind. It is that place that I go for a premium or these big cinematic experiences mm-hmm. and then I'm done with it. That, that's it. I don't really care about being on my PlayStation consistently. I'll just go to PC and use Xbox Game Pass to play, play everything. Mm-hmm. Sure. I do think though that this is also an eye opener um, with how these deals go. Like we, I think before there were a lot of long-term exclusive deals with uh, studios and publishers yeah. and hard like hardware companies so like Nintendo, Sony and PlayStation um, and Xbox, right? Um, but I think now a lot of developers are going for short-term deals especially mm-hmm. because a lot of publishers are like look, you're going to have to work to become the next god of war. Like look at what ha- Sucker Punch had to do to get the marketing for Ghost, right? Um mm-hmm. yeah. so I I think this is a really interesting time that we're seeing in gaming and not necessarily for, you know, the praise of Xbox or, you know, the lack of praise for PlayStation, but for the praise of hopefully becoming less um, or having less barriers in the industry for Mm -hmm. how people access their games. Like there's so many friends that I have that do not have PlayStation and they want to play God of War. Right. Um, they want to play those The Last of Us, but they don't know those stories and they can't because they, they can't invest that money into a PlayStation because they already have an Xbox.